Chapter 4. Women Do not marry women that your fathers married. What happened before Islam is done. It is a shameful and despicable thing to do, an act that is truly an evil one. You are forbidden to take the following as wives, your mothers, sisters, and your aunts that are paternal, daughters of brothers or sisters, milk mothers or sisters who breastfed you, and aunts that are maternal. Stepdaughters who are in your care, or the children of women you have had sex in marriage with. But in this case, if you were married but did not have sex with them, then marriage with them will be permitted. The wives of your sons, two sisters at the same time, and what happened before Islam is done, nor women who are already married, other than those who are your right hand's possession. In this case, the possession of their right hand refers to one who becomes the responsibility and ward of a believing woman or man who came under a Muslim's protection after war through being gifted, inherited or sold, and if married, may have for some reason been unable to annul the previous marriage they had. God has ordained such things for you, so you may obey him through righteous dealing and show that you understand. Other women are lawful to you so long as you seek them in marriage with gifts from your property, looking for marriage with them, not just to liaise with them sexually. If you wish to enjoy women through marriage, give them a dowry. God has made this obligatory. But if you should mutually agree to change the dowry after it has been given, adjust it accordingly. You will not be blamed for doing so. God is all-knowing and all-wise. And if you wish to marry a believing woman, but your means do not suffice, then you should marry a woman your right hand possesses, as long as she believes. God knows best the depth of each person's faith. You are all from one another, like one family. So marry them with their guardian's consent, and pay them proper dowries too. Make them married women, not lovers or mistresses. And if they committed adultery when married, then they should have a believing woman's punishment when punished. Only those of you that fear you would sin should marry those your right hands possess, but it is best to restrain your desire indeed. God is most merciful and forgiving. He makes his law clear, so you can follow the ways of those who act righteously. And he guides you so you may follow the way of the righteous, those who came before you. The people of the book were forbidden from marrying captives. He wishes to turn you towards mercy. He is all-knowing and all-wise too. He wishes to overlook your transgression, but those who follow their desires are far astray. God wishes to make things easier for you, as man was created weak, and from his passions and desires he finds it difficult to abstain. Believers, do not use up another person's wealth unjustly. Use it only for a trade that is mutually agreed, and do not kill each other as this is forbidden, except through justice as God decrees. If any of you do such things out of hostility or injustice, we shall make him suffer the fire. But if you avoid great sins, we'll forgive your smaller misdeeds and give you what the believers desire. Entry into paradise, which you will enter through an honourable gate. And believers should not covet what God has given to others. Instead, they should supplicate, saying, Lord, provide us with something similar or better than what you have given them. Men and women will be rewarded for what they have earned. God has knowledge of everything. We have appointed heirs for whatever parents and close relatives leave behind, including those to whom you've pledged marriage, so give them their share. God is a witness to every action by mankind. Husbands should take full care of wives from what has given to them, and God has given men responsibility over things from which they spend. Righteous wives are devout and guard themselves and their husband's wealth when husbands are away. And if your wife is disobedient in what God has prescribed, deal with it in the following way. Remind them first of the teachings of God. Explain what must be explained. And if they persist in being disobedient to you on the issue, then at night in bed with them, do not lay. And if after that they still persist in disobedience, strike them. But do not do so violently. But if they obey, you have no right to act against them. God is truly high and mighty. So beware of him in your treatment of your wives, lest he punish you for treating them unjustly. And if you fear that a couple may break up, find a counsellor from each family to try and bring them together again. 
And then if the couple want to put things right, God the all-knowing, all-aware, will bring reconciliation for them. Worship God. Join nothing with him. Be good to your parents, relatives, orphans and those in need, and to your neighbours near and far, to travellers who are wanting, and to those your right hand possesses indeed. God does not like arrogant, boastful people who are miserly and order others to do the same. They hide the bounty God has given them, and there will be a humiliating torment that they will face. And God dislikes those who spend their wealth to show off, and do not believe in God or the last day. Such arrogance is Satan's path, and he who takes Satan for a companion has taken an evil comrade. How could it harm them to believe in God and the judgment, and to give in charity from what's given to them? God knows such people well, and he wrongs no one, by even the weight of a speck of dust, and you'll all be returned to him again. He doubles the reward of any good deed, and gives a tremendous reward from him. What will they do on the day of judgment when we bring Muhammad as a witness against them? And we will bring forth a witness from each group to testify they gave my words to their community. And on the day those who disbelieve and doubted the Prophet will wish for the ground to swallow them utterly. And believers do not even entertain the thought of prayer if you are to approach it drunkenly. Refrain until your minds are clear so that you are fully aware of your words when you pray and do not pray in a state of ritual impurity, you must wait until you have cleansed yourself in the proper way. And do not pray in a state of ritual impurity, you must wait until you have cleansed yourself in the proper way, you may pass through the mosque while still impure, but you should not pray until you have bathed. But if you have relieved yourself, or had intercourse, and cannot find water, or are ill, or on a journey, then you may use clean sand or soil and wipe your hands and face, and that will be satisfactory for you to resume praying again, and God is always ready to pardon and forgive indeed. Prophet, think about those given scripture before your people, those who encourage you to stray. Can you see how they would love for your believers to follow them on their crooked way? God knows best which of them are enemies, and he is enough of a protector and helper for you and some of the words in the Torah about your coming Muhammad were indeed changed by some of the Jews. And when you command them of something, they say we hear and we disobey, and they say mind us, which is intended as an insult. The prophet should never be addressed in such a way. If they had said we hear and we obey, and said look at us, that would have been better for them. But only a few of the Jews really believe. God has cursed them for their defiance. People of the book, believe in what we have sent down to confirm the Torah that is with you, before we turn your hearts away from guidance and reject you, like those who broke the Sabbath, God's promises are true. God does not forgive the adjoining of partners with him, anything else he forgives of who he will, but anyone who joins partners with him is lying and committing a terrible sin for which they will be regretful. Have you seen the ones like Buhair ibn Amr? who think they can forgive themselves of sin? It is God alone who can forgive what they do. What a terrible delusion the disbelievers are in. No one will be wronged by even the tiniest speck. God is just and fair, but the disbelievers sinfully invent lies about God, and those who were given of scripture a share, such as Malik ibn Saif, now believe in idols and follows the unbelievers too, and says to those who believe in the Quran, The Meccan tribes are more rightly guided than you. They are the ones God has rejected. None can help those rejected by him. Do they have any of what God possesses? No. And if they did, they would give none away of their possession. Do you see them jealous of what we have given Muhammad, forgetting we gave much to the descendants of Abraham too? Some had scripture and wisdom, and some great kingdoms, and some rejected them, and some knew they brought the truth. For the disbelievers, hell will burn and consume them. Those who reject revelation are sent to the fire indeed, and when their skins have burned away, will replace them with new ones, so they'll feel the pain endlessly. God is mighty, God is wise, and those who believe and do good deeds, they'll be admitted into and remain forever in the garden, graced with flowing streams. They'll have pure spouses accompanying them, and we shall give them a cool and refreshing shade. 
They are the ones who followed God's commands, and in the paradise forever they will stay. God commands you return what you've been entrusted with to those who own that thing, and if you were ever called to arbitrate on a matter, do so with justice and be God-fearing. God's instructions to you are excellent. He hears and sees everything you do. So you who believe, obey God and the messenger, and those who have authority among you. If you dispute over any matter, refer it to God and the messenger, if you believe in him in the last day. That is better and fairer for you in the end. Follow what God has decreed and the messenger's way. Prophet, have you considered those who claim to believe in the Quran and scriptures sent before you, who seek a ruling on an issue from God's messenger, but if they dislike it, they search for other judgments too? Such was the case with one who claimed to believe, who had a dispute with a Jew and sought the Prophet's judgment on it. And the Prophet heard the case and said the Jew was in the right, but the man disliked it. And so he wished to take the matter to a Meccan idol, even though believers were ordered to reject them. Such people have truly been led astray. They are following the ways of Satan. When the hypocrites are told to turn to God's messengers and revelation for judgment, they quickly turn away. But where will they turn to when faced with the punishment such actions will bring their way? They say we only seek other judges because we truly wish to achieve harmony and peace. They lie, and God knows well what is in their hearts, but do not punish them for their hypocrisy. Admonish them with your words and reprimand them, so they may turn to true belief, and know all messengers we sent were meant to be obeyed, truly by God's leave. Prophet, if only the hypocrites had come to you after wronging themselves and begged for God's forgiveness indeed, they would have found you asking for their forgiveness and that God accepts repentance and gives mercy. God swears they will not be true believers until they let you decide whenever they dispute and find no resistance in their souls and totally accept the decisions made by you. And if we decree to them, lay down your lives for God or leave your homes, you would only be heeded by a few. It would be better for them and a stronger confirmation of faith if they had done as they were commanded to. And we would have given them a rich reward of their own and guided them to the straight path. Those who believe in God and the messenger will be blessed with a place in paradise that will always last. They'll be among the best companions, the messengers, the truthful, the martyrs and the righteous indeed. What excellent companions to be amongst, that is God's favour. No one knows better than the Almighty. Believers be on your guard, march to battle in small groups or as one party, and in your midst is one who lags behind as he only approaches fearfully, and if you were to go forth and be slain in battle, he would say, God has spared me and thus been good to me. But if you are victorious in the battle, he will surely say, if only I had gone with them on that expedition, I would have had some of the battle gains. He thus forgets that he should be fighting only to uphold the faith, as every action is rewarded by its intention, so wishing only for bounty is surely astray. Let those who are willing to trade the life of this world for the hereafter come and fight in the Lord's way. To anyone who does, whether killed or victorious, with a great reward they'll be repaid. Why should you not fight in God's cause and for the oppressed men, women and children who cry out, Lord, rescue us from this town whose people are oppressors. Lord, let a protector and helper come about. The believers fight for God's cause, but those who reject faith fight under Satan's command. Fight the allies of Satan. Satan's ploys are weak. Against God and his believers they cannot stand. Prophet, have you seen the ones who claim to follow you? and the instruction that was originally given to them. They were told, perform the prayer, pay the arms, and restrain yourselves from fighting. And later when they were commanded to fight, they feared the enemy they would face, feared that enemy more than they even feared God, and they would call to God and say, Lord, why have you commanded fighting now, if only we had more time on earth where we wish to stay? Tell them, prophet, there is only a little enjoyment in this world, the hereafter is far better for those who are aware of him, and on the day of judgment no one will be wronged in any way, not even by the weight of a speck of dust, 
or the smallest particle of a single grain. And even if you fear death, it will come to you even if you were in a fortress and barricaded yourself within. And if good comes to them, prophet, they say it's from God. But if bad comes, they blame you and say, this has come from him. Say both the good and bad come from God. Look at these people. What is wrong with them? Even though they are clearly told, they fail to comprehend. God is the one who creates all things, and he makes all things come about. There is no action, event or procedure, no matter how small, that he did not set in motion to come out. Anything good that happens to your people, prophet, is from God, and the bad is ultimately from yourselves, from the sins that human beings do. Collectively their actions are the reason bad deeds manifest themselves. But God is the one who makes it happen and is in control. He is the powerful, the Lord of motion and might. And we are witness to the fact we have sent you Muhammad as a messenger to urge people to what's right. Whoever obeys the messenger obeys God. And if there are some who choose not to listen to you, we have not sent you to be their keeper. They are simply the people who you are to send the message to. They say, Muhammad, we obey you. But when they leave you in the depths of the night, they scheme and do other than what you commanded, but their every action by God is seen. God keeps a record of all they do, but your trust in God, he is the one who will protect. And why will the believers not heed this Quran? Will they not consider it and reflect? And if it had been from any other than God, there would have been much inconsistency to be found within. And some of the hypocrites among you hear of negative matters, and they become matters that they start spreading. If they hear of loss in battles or the killing of believers, they are quick to tell everyone they see. But if good news comes to them, they wait for more proof of the reported progress or victory. If they only ask the messenger about it, or ask those who have authority, those who are genuinely seeking the information would have found out the truth of what they seek. Remember, if it were not for God's favour to you, you would have followed Satan, the accursed indeed. God has promised the best of rewards for those who believe in him. He is high and mighty. So prophet, fighting God's way, even on your own, you are responsible for the actions you choose to do. Do not be concerned if you are left to fight on your own, but urge the believers to join you. God may reduce or withhold the power of the disbelievers, he is more mighty and able to punish indeed. And on hearing this, the prophet raced to battle the disbelievers at Badr, saying, I swear by God I shall fight them, even if it's just me. Whoever speaks good to reconcile and unite two parties, like Abu Bakr does, he'll have a good reward. But whoever speaks badly like Abu Jahl will carry its burden and have a terrible punishment in store. God is in control of everything. Believers, when you are offered a greeting, reply with a better one, or in the least return the greeting, God keeps account of every action that is done. He is God, there is no God but Him. He will gather you all on the day, the day of which there is no doubt. Which words could be better or truer than the words God chooses to say? Believers, why do you dispute over the ten hypocrites who abandon faith? They have left you in Medina, heading for Mecca. God has rejected them and allow them to go astray. Do you want to try to guide such people who God had left to follow their own desires indeed? If God leaves any to wander blindly and go astray, you will never find a way for them to act rightly. They would love for you and the believers to reject this faith and be like them and do what they have done. Therefore, do not mix with them until they emigrate to Medina, the sincere believing ones. If they should turn into renegades and fight you, take them captive or kill them wherever they may be. Take none of them as a supporter, except those who seek refuge with those with whom you have a peace treaty. Or if they come to you as they do not wish to fight their own people, you must refrain from aggression. God could have given them power over you, and they would have fought, so do not attack them. But if they do not fight against you and your people, do not fight, especially if they offer peace. But there are others who will not choose to fight you unless they sense that they'll have victory. So if some people do not leave you be, or offer you peace, or stop themselves from fighting too, 
Seize them and kill them wherever they are encountered. We have given authority against them to you. A believer should never kill another believer, except if by pure mistake it is done. And if one kills a believer, he must free a believing slave and pay the victim's family compensation. Unless they choose to let compensation go as an act of charity. But if the victim was a believer from a group you were at war with, then you only set a believing slave free. And if the victim was one of a group with whom you had a treaty, then compensation must be made. It should be given to the victim's relatives, and the perpetrator should free a believing slave. Anyone who lacks the means to do the aforementioned should fast two months consecutively. God is all-knowing and wise, but if one of you kills a believer deliberately, his punishment will be hell, and there he'll remain. God rejects him and is angry with him, and he's prepared the fire as a recompense, a terrible place he will endlessly burn in. So you who believe, be careful when you go and fight in God's way, and to anyone who offers you a greeting of peace, do not turn to them and say, You are not a believer. You only say it because you seek safety, and do not then kill them because you wish to profit from their death to gain something worldly. God has plenty for you believers, and remember, you yourselves were in the same position once. You did not believe, but God has been gracious to you by bringing you to faith and taking you away from those in Mecca who disbelieved. God is fully aware of all you do. Believers that stay at home and those who go out to strive are not the same. Apart from those incapacitated by illness and disability, great reward is reserved for those who strive in God's way. God has raised the rank of those people, above the rank of those who stayed at home indeed. And though he has promised all the believers good, those who go out striving will be rewarded tremendously. The highest ranks and lowest are given by God to those who believe. God is the most forgiving and merciful. He bestows forgiveness and mercy. And of the fifty people who accepted Islam but then rejected faith, and joined the disbelievers against the believers, and then in battle were slain, the angels come and take their souls and ask, What was the reason that made you leave God's way? And they'll respond, We were oppressed by the disbelievers, and couldn't properly establish faith. But they'll be told, Was God's land not wide enough? for you to find a space to migrate to. These people will have hell as their reward, for them great punishment is due. But it will not be so for the ones who are truly helpless, men, women and children who had no way to leave. God is most pardoning and forgiving, and he may well pardon such people as these. Anyone who migrates in God's way will find refuge and plenty in the earth, and whoever leaves home in God's way and is slain will have great reward from God the rebirth. God is most forgiving and merciful. Believers, when you are travelling through the land, there is no blame if you shorten your prayers, if you fear the disbelievers, your enemies are close at hand. Prophet, when you are with the believers leading prayer, let a group pray, and let the others stand armed guarding you, and when you have finished prayer, let them then rotate, and lead the other group in prayer too. The disbelievers would love to see you without your weapons, so they could come and strike you all down. So remain armed, except if tired or sheltering from rain. Beware the disbelievers, for they may be around. Be on your guard against the disbelievers. Hell lies in store for them. God has prepared a painful punishment, where they will be burned again and again. And after you perform set prayers, remember God sitting, standing or lying on your sides. And once you're safe, keep up regular prayer, as God decrees, at the times prescribed. Do not be faint-hearted when pursuing the enemy. If you feel you are suffering, trust in God. They are suffering equally. And you have the blessing of knowing, you can hope that God will give you some good thing. But the disbelievers have no way of hoping for such a gift. God is all-wise and all-knowing. We have sent down the Qur'an to you, Prophet, with truth. So judge between people justly following what God has shown you of who is in the right and who is in the wrong, and shown it to you clearly. Do not side with the one who is deceitful and the one who does not tell the truth. Like Tumah ibn Ubaidiq, who accused Zayd ibn Samin the Jew, of stealing a suit of armour when it was Tumah who had stolen it, and seek forgiveness for the fact you nearly had the Jew punished. 
God is most forgiving and merciful. Do not plead for Tuma, who did sin and steal, and treacherously swore to God that the lies he said about the innocent Zayd were real. God does not love those who act so falsely, the hypocrites, the liars like him, and all others who manifest disbelief and ignore truth, those who revel in desire and sin. They try to hide what they have done from people, but they can't hide their deeds from God in any way. He watches them while they scheme at night and hears the treacherous things they say. There are believers who argue for them in this life, but at the resurrection who will argue for them? Who will try to be their defender when there is no refuge other than God's mercy then? Yet those who wrong their souls and sincerely ask forgiveness will find God forgiving and merciful indeed and know that the one who sins only does so against his own soul. God is all-knowing, all-wise and mighty. And as for one who commits a sin and then throws the blame onto someone innocent of that crime, that person has burdened himself with a sin that will weigh heavy on its scales at the appointed time. If it were not for the grace of God and his mercy, some of Tumah's people would have led you astray, but in fact they only fool themselves. They cannot harm you in any way. As God has sent scripture and wisdom to you and taught you what you did not know, God's bounty to you has been truly great. Thanks and gratitude to him should be shown. There is no good in much of their secret talk, only in commanding people to make amends, do good and give charity. To anyone who does such things while keeping God in mind, they will be rewarded tremendously. And if anyone opposes the messenger when guidance has been made clear to him and then chooses to go astray, we shall allow them to roam and dwell on the path that leads to hell as they have chosen to go that way. God does not forgive those who worship others alongside him, but he will forgive as he sees fit those who commit lesser sins. But whoever commits idolatry has gone far, far astray, like the disbelievers who invoke idols instead of God, idols they regard as female. And Satan the rebel, the accursed one, said he would lead many astray, saying, I will whisper vain desires in people and take a share of your servants away. I will command them not to believe in the resurrection, to slit the ears of cattle. I will surely whisper to them and command them to tamper with God's religion. I will surely lead them into transgression. Whoever chooses Satan as a leader instead of God will bring themselves to ruin indeed. Satan makes them promises and gives them false hope, but in the end he will abandon them utterly. Those who follow him will have hell as their home and will find no escape from its flames, but those who believe and do good deeds, they'll have the garden and flowing streams there forever to remain. This is the true promise from God. Who speaks more truly than the Almighty, to whom all praise is due? Believers, your futures will not be as you desire. After accepting faith, harm will still come to you. Nor will things be as the disbelievers think. They think the day's sins are automatically forgiven at night, and the night's sins are automatically forgiven by day. But in fact, anyone who sins will answer for them and find none to help them against God in any way. But anyone who does good deeds, be they male or female, while believing, will go to the paradise and no one will be wronged by as much of a speck of dust when being judged on all they did with their lives. Who could be better than the ones who devote themselves to God sincerely and follow the religion of Abraham, who was true in faith indeed? God took Abraham as a friend. It is to God all things in the heaven and earth belong. He is aware of all things, knows the secrets of every heart, and enables every action and motion. Prophet, you are asked about women's inheritance. Say, God himself gives you a ruling on this issue. He has already revealed the clarity of the matter in earlier revelation he has given to you. Do not wrong them, give them their rights and the property you have been entrusted with and treat the orphans fairly. God is aware of the good you do and all that you've neglected. If a wife fears her husband is disobedient to what God has prescribed or that he might desert her, they should discuss the matter in a way that will allow for contentment and peace to occur. Peace will mean that the wife is pleased, which is better than the man transgressing or leaving indeed, and human souls are inclined to selfish desires, 
you should treat your partners equally. Follow God's commands. Do good and remember the Lord. He is well aware of all you do. And if you have multiple wives, you'll never be able to treat them equally, no matter how much you try to. But do not ignore one wife completely. Do not suspend them while they are married. You must give them their rights in love, respect and fair maintenance, as God has decreed. If you follow God's commands, do right and refrain from evil, he is merciful and forgiving. But if husband and wife do separate, God will provide for both parties. He is the provider, the ever-living. God will give them out of his bounty. His bounty is infinite and he is all-wise. Everything in the heaven and earth belongs to God. He is the one on whom all creation relies. Believers, we have commanded you and those given previous scripture to be mindful of God in every way. Even if you do ignore him, know everything belongs to him. He is the one worthy of all praise. Indeed, all in the heaven and earth belongs to him. He is enough for those who trust in him. If he willed, he has the power to remove you people all at once and replace you with another creation. Whoever wishes for the rewards of this life should know that the rewards of this life and the next are God's to bestow. So why be content with this life's lesser reward? Why not strive for paradise, a better reward than anything on earth you know? God sees and hears everything. Believers trust in God and uphold justice, even if against yourselves, or even if it is against your parents, the rich, the poor, close relatives or anyone else. God is the one who takes care of all. Do not follow your desires. Act justly and be fair. And if you hamper or neglect being just, know that of all your actions, God is truly aware. Believers, believe in God and his messenger and the Quran God has sent down to him and in what God sent before, giving them light and guidance to refrain from sin. Any who do not believe in God's messengers, scripture, angels and the judgment are truly far astray and God will not forgive those who believe, disbelieve, believe again and then once more leave his faith. Such are the ones who believed in prophets but then disbelieved in the ones that came after them. God will not guide such people to the straight path. Such hypocrites will suffer the agonizing torment. Do those who side with the disbelievers over those with faith think they'll be empowered by them? All power is God's to give and do not sit with those who mock the Quran lest you return to disbelief again. God has revealed to you in scripture that if you hear people denying or ridiculing it, move away from them until they talk of other things. God will surely gather the hypocrites. The hypocrites and the disbelievers will be in hell together. But for now, some of the disbelievers wait to see what will happen to you believers. Because if you have success and a given victory, they will say, were we not always with you on your side? Give us a share of the gains you received. But if the disbelievers succeed, they say to them, did we not help and protect you against those who believe? God will judge between them all on the day of resurrection. And on that day, all will surely see the disbelievers will have no means whatsoever of succeeding over those who believe. The hypocrites try to trick God by concealing their disbelief, but it is they who are deceived. They stand to pray, doing so slowly, think of God but a little, they only wish by others to be seen. They switch often, never fully committing to this faith or the faith of those who came before you. And if God leaves such people to go astray, then they'll never find the straight path to cling to.